multi spanning tree protocol fine the very first thing like uh, if you talk about stp in stp cst was open standard is not it yes. and in our stp again cst was open standard but it, it, if you talk about pvst plus and rapid pvst plus these two protocols were cisco, cisco proprietary. proprietary protocols this was the problem actually so if you are using cst in both stp as well as rstp then it's not gonna to be possible to perform load balancing this was the major problem of having cst actually fine then cisco launched pvst and rapid pvst plus further right like uh, in terms of stp they launched pvst plus and in terms of rstp they launched rapid pvst so now in with using pvst plus and rapid pvst plus it is possible to get load balancing you can get load balancing very easily without any problem but still we are having some problems here in pvst plus as well as rapid pvst plus first that they are cisco proprietary and if we are working on juniper switches or any other vendor specific switches then definitely we cannot implement pvst plus or rapid pvst plus so we have to implement only and only cst and again in cst it will not be possible to get load balancing this was the major uh, problem with stp i mean uh, with cst actually next now like even if you are using pvst plus or rapid pvst plus in both cases number of instances of stp is too much because here in case of pvst as well as rapid pvst it will be creating instances of stp for each vlan separately like if you are having 100 vlans on your switch then there will be 100 instances of stp right if there are uh, like uh, 250 VLANs, then definitely it will require to run 250 instances of STP. And sometimes you have seen that there will be some limitations uh, per platform basis. Like some platforms will support maximum 128 instances of STP. So what if you are having more than 128 VLANs available on your switch? In that case, of course, your switch will not be able to run instance of STP for each VLAN. There will be some VLANs for which there will not be any instance running of STP, right? And if there is any VLAN for which instance of STP is not running among switches, then definitely bridging loop is going to occur in between. I mean, in between all those switches for that for those specific uh, specific VLANs for which you are not having an instance of STP, is not it? So at last, I can say that still we are having some problems with PVST plus as well as rapid PVST plus because. Of course, you can get load balancing in both cases, whether you are running PVST plus or rapid PVST plus. The only difference between PVST plus and rapid PVST plus is what? Convergence. So, thing is like PVST plus and rapid PVST plus. First, Cisco proprietary. Second, it will create instances of STP for each VLAN. So, total number of instances of STP will be used and to maintain database of all those instances of stp it will require more and more memory and to process all those instances of course it will require higher cpu as well it will consume more cpu fine so that was the problem with pvst plus as well as rapid pvst plus so finally they launched actually mst multi spanning tree and this mst actually works in between cst and pvst it does not work same as CST and also it does not work same as PVST. However, by default, the behavior of MST would be same as CST. I will let you know that why I mean why I'm saying like uh, MST, the default behavior of MST would be same as CST. I will be discussing it with you later on and even we will prove it that by default behavior of MST is same as CST or you can say by default MST works same as CST. Fine. So as per its names, its name like multi spanning tree the very first thing that it is an open standard so it does it does i mean it is not like uh, you will be able to implement this mst only on cisco specific switches you can 
you can implement this MST on any vendor specific switch like you might be you, you will be having switches from Juniper sometimes you will be having switches from HP as well but remember that you can implement MST on all vendor specific switches there is no I, I mean there is no vendor limitation for MST because it is an open standard the first thing is open standard second thing is what that it has same I mean it has fast convergence same as RSTP it converts quickly as same as RSTP converge right so MSTP converts quickly same as RSTP so so there will not be any difference in between I mean in uh, there will not be any difference in uh, in between RSTP as well as I mean RSTP and MSTP uh, for their convergence time of course there will not be any difference I mean MSTP is fast same as RSTP third in MST, it will not create instances of STP for each VLAN automatically. It is not like PVST. Like in PVST, it was creating instances of STP for each VLAN separately. But this time, in case of MST, remember that it is not going to create instance of STP for each VLAN separately. Actually, this MST allows us with using this MST actually what can we do that we can map multiple VLANs into a single instance of STP like for an example if we talk about the PVST plus and if we are having 10 VLANs then of course there will be 10 instances of STP right but in case of MST what can we do that that for VLAN 1 to 5 we can create one instance of STP for VLAN 6 to 10 we can create another instance of STP fine so there will be only two instances of STP now so it is not same as CST because in CST it, it was uh, running only single instance of STP for all VLANs and also it is not same as PVST because it is not creating instance of STP for each VLAN so basically it works in between CST and PVST. MST works in between CST and PVST. Have you understood it now? Okay. But by default, it works same as CST. You know why? Because by default, all VLANs from 1 to 4094 are mapped into a single instance, which is instance 0. By default, all VLANs are mapped into a single instance of MST which is instance 0. You will always get this default instance of MST which is instance 0 and by default all VLANs will always be mapped into this instance. It means there will be only single instance for all VLANs. For all VLANs by default. It means that by default it is gonna to work as a CST. Because in CST also there was only one instance of STP, right? And by default in MSTP also there will be only one instance of STP for all VLANs. Fine? Alright. But in MSTP, as I said that you c it will be up to you that how many instances of STP you want to configure on your switch like as I said that for VLAN 1 to 5 you can create one instance of STP right VLAN 1 to 5 then you can create another instance of STP for VLAN 6 to 10 so it is it's, it's not like that there will be only one instance of STP no you can create multiple instances of MST sorry uh, of STP as per your requirement and you can map multiple VLANs to a single instance of STP in MST fine so now let's talk about the advantages of MST first open standard second it has fast convergence same as RSTP third it has reduced total number of instances of STP and they will be by default only single instance for all VLANs but Further, we can modify it. We can create multiple instances of STP for different different VLANs. It's not it. 
even it also allows you to create a single instance for a single villain as well a single instance for a single villain as well like for villain one you can create instance one for villain two you can create instance two but remember on a single switch again it would be depending on the platform like here on 3750 or 3550 we can create maximum up to 16 instances of stp on a single switch on these platforms we can create maximum up to 16 instances of stp some i mean only maximum 16 instances can work simultaneously on a single switch if you are working on 3550 or 3750 series of switches understood so now <coughs> Because we don't need to go through the uh, properties of MSTP now anymore because we know that how RSTP works actually. So MSTP will also convert same as RSTP. Like there is no need to implement uplink fast, there is no need to implement backbone fast, but it still requ requ re I mean, remember that port fast will still be required. And in case if you do not enable port fast feature in MSTP, then there will not be any advantage of configuring MSTP because it will, it will not converge quickly because still your access interfaces, access ports will take same time. Access ports will still take like approximately 30 seconds to move into forwarding state. So of course in MSTP also it will be required, it will be mandatory to enable port fast feature. However, you will never require to enable uplink fast or backbone fast fine and now remember that in mstp we are having some attributes which are known as mstp attributes and if you talk about mstp attributes we are having three types of attributes available here one name second revision number third instance number and map to vlanes within a single mstp domain it is mandatory that all mst attributes must match If any one of the MST attributes mismatch on any one of the switch in a single MST domain, in that case, that switch will think that it is not in a same domain. Or you, you can say that switch will always think that neighbor switch is not a same region. I'm not talk. I'm not gonna to talk about like uh, domain now. Here I'll be talking about regions only. I'll call region now. So you can implement this mstp uh, with using uh, two things or you can say in two different scenarios one is intra region and second one is inter region First of all, I will be talking about intra-region communication only, intra-region MSTP configuration only. So remember, I hope that you have also learned this intra-region MST configuration during CCNP as well. And again, I'm, I'm uh, going to repeat it once again in front of you because some of the, I, I don't think so that uh, all of you are remember all these things. So let me explain it to you. If you are talking about intra-region, means that we are talking about a single MST domain. Is not it? Intra-region. And make sure that if you are talking about intra-region MST configuration, that all, in that case, all switches must have same MST attributes. Same name, same revision number, same number of instances, and same map to VLAN into those instances. This is mandatory that all mst attributes must match on all switches in a in a single region fine 
okay <clears throat> now remember that by default instance 0 is there right and by default all VLANs are mapped into instance 0 <clears throat> and this instance 0 is also known as CIST common internal spanning tree common internal spanning tree fine I'll be discussing the uses of this CIST later on but remember that instance 0 is known as CIST now I am going to implement this MSTP on switches as I said that if you are going to implement intra region MST it means that on all switches all MST attributes must match fine and there are three attributes only one is name revision number and finally instance numbers and map to VLANs to those instances so let's start it now And again remember just wait for a moment. Fine. Let's start this configuration now from switch 1. By default, it will be running STP. IEEE means it is running STP. Spanning tree mod. Very first command, right? Do show history. Now configure your mod MST on all switches, first of all. one more thing switch 1 and switch 2 are not going to form trunking by default so let's configure trunking in between these two switches interface range fast ethernet <coughs> fine Now let's check default configuration of MST, right? Show spanning tree MST configuration. So default name will be null, default revision number will be zero, and there will be only one instance of STP which will be instance zero, and all VLANs by default, all VLANs from 124094 will be mapped into a single instance of MST instance zero. Any problem? You will find same configuration on all switches. Show spanning trees uh, MST configuration on switch two also. Same configuration will be present on switch three. Fine. So by default, there will be only one instance of STP, which is instance zero. 
and instance 0 is also known as CIST common internal spanning tree why do we call it CIST I'll be discussing it later on but this time let me show you that by default it is going to do work as a CST common spanning tree let's create some VLANs from VLAN 1 to show VLAN brief how many VLANs are there let's move on switch to as well show VLANs brief how many VLANs are there then all these 10 VLANs must also present on switch 3 as well as well as switch 4 so these 10 VLANs are available are existing on all four switches but still you will see that there will be only a single instance of STP for all 10 VLANs let me show you show spanning tree enter MST 0 that's it and if you say show spanning tree MST 0 it will also show you that VLANs from 1 to 4094 are mapped into this instance into this in, in, into this MST instance 0 fine so by default it will be working same as CST do there will be only single instance of uh, uh, MST or oh, sorry of STP for all VLANs. VLANs fine any problem in it okay and if we do not modify MST it means there will not be any advantage of configuring MST yeah that definitely it is having fast convergence same as RSTP but in terms of load balancing there will not be any advantage of configuring MST so if you want to really get load balancing then of course you will require to modify your MST configuration I'll be discussing everything don't worry so now you will require to modify your MST attributes according to your requirement now let's say that we are having 10 VLANs for these 10 VLANs I want to configure two different two separate instances of STP so we can do this configuration and one more thing it is not mandatory to configure its name as well as revision number you can leave them default right it's not mandatory you can go and simply configure your instances only there will not be any effect of not configuring name and revision because by default name is null and revision number is what zero but if you are modifying name and revision number then make sure that on all switches in a single reason it must be made it, it must be same of course all M all MST attributes must be same right so this time what are we gonna to do here let's start it from switch one I'll be saying that spanning tree MST configuration for doing any configuration inside MSTP first of all you will require to move inside MST configuration mode so this time you have configured this command spanning tree MST configuration and now you are inside MST configuration mode inside this mode you can modify your MST attributes fine such as if you want to configure name name can be 32 bit character long by default let's say it is revision number can be in between 0 to 65 by default it is 0 let's configure it as 1 then you can configure instances instance I mean you can configure instance multiple instances uh, multiple instances of STP as well like by default it was having only single instance which was instance 0 but this time I mean this this facility is also available this feature is also available in MSTP so that we can create multiple instances here right as per requirement so I'm gonna to say instance and then you can take an instance ID and instance 0 is already existing so I'm not gonna to take instance 0 once again right so I'll be taking instance 1 here and then I will require to map VLANs into this instance now so let's assume that I'm gonna to map VLAN 1 to 5 in instance 1 and then I can say instance 2 VLAN 6 to 10 and remember that remaining VLANs will still be mapped into instance zero. zero and one more thing without exiting this mode your changes will not be applied let me show you do show spanning tree MST configuration 
your change your changes have not taken place yet so you just need to move yeah, yeah you just need to exit from this config mode after exiting from this mst configuration mode let me show you show spanning tree mst configuration now your changes will take place and if you are if you are running vtp version 3 you understand that what will happen actually in case of vtp version 3 if you configure mstp configuration i mean if you do mst configuration on one switch then it will be populated <coughs> throughout the network on all switches dynamically with the help of vtp version 3 but this time it's not gonna to be populate i mean uh, of course switches will not populate this information dynamically because vtp version 3 is not configured here do show history let's do this configuration on all switches now <clears throat> then let's do it on switch 4 as well so we have done this configuration now on all switches <clears throat> okay so now there will be three instances of stp right let me show you show spanning tree mst configuration how many instances are there now three three so spanning tree on switch one this is instance zero this is instance one and this is instance two and by default there will be only one switch will be root bridge for all instances is not it like I think so here switch 3 is having best this ID among all so now you can see show spanning tree for instance 0 this bridge is the root for instance 1 this bridge is the root for instance 3 sorry for instance 2 as well this bridge is the root now let's say that again <coughs> I don't want to configure this switch 3 as a root bridge I want to configure switch 1 and switch 2 as root bridges for each instance like for instance 1 I want to configure switch 1 as a root base for instance 2 I want to configure switch 2 as a root base I mean primary and secondary we can also use primary and secondary keywords as well or you can also modify your bridge priority right. manually but again rules will remain same like in the increment of 4 0 9, 9, 9, 6 only let's move back on switch 1 and let's say spanning tree MST 1 root primary if you want to use primary and secondary keyword then you can use those keywords in this in this way and then after you can say spanning tree mst to root secondary in same manner i'll be going on switch two and then i will say spanning tree mst one root secondary and then i will say spanning tree mst two root primary fine so in this way you can modify your root bridge selection for mst instances fine but for instance zero because we have not modified configuration for instance zero it means that for instance zero still switch three will remain as root bridge but now you can see that for instance one switch one will be root bridge let me show you show spanning tree mst zero for instance zero it will not be a root bridge but for instance one of course it will be a root base what is it saying root this switch for mst1 and all interfaces are dp now here for mst1 for mst2 is it root base no it is having root port right so if any switch is having root port for any instance of stp it means it is not a root base so this time you can move on switch 2 and you can see on switch 2 so spanning tree mst2 that it will be a root base is not it so what is it saying root this switch for mst2 and uh, for one of course it must not be a root bridge it must be having a root port any problem if you are having any problem please let me know yeah of course cost will be uh, now on fast ethernet links this cost will be 200,000 so don't worry about that but the concept will remain same however cost have changed like in place of 19 it, it will be now 200,000 but the rules will remain same for for the election of root base 
for the election of RP for the election of DP as well and here MSTP will be responsible to transmit its MSTP BPDU MST BPDU I get your point and also we can call them M records so if someone asks you that what is M record so it would be simply MST BPDU so you can also call MSTP BPDU as M records fine and it works same as RSTP it have fast conversions and all and all fine and uh, now this is that how can we manipulate root breeze election again i'm gonna to remove these primary and secondary keywords from here and one more thing here there is no diameter command like we configure diameter command in stp in pvst whether it was pvst plus or rapid pvst plus in both of in both cases we configure diameter command but here it is not possible to configure diameter command in mstp so this time i'm gonna to change its bridge priority manually and uh, for doing that you will require to say spanning tree mst1 and then you will say yeah. priority and priority can be in between 0 to 6 1 4 4 0 but in the increments of 4096 4, why last value is 6 1 4 4 0 why is it not 6 5 5 3 5 6 5 5 3 6 after incrementing 4096 into this last number 61440 it will become 64536 but we do not have 65536 in our range because our range is from 0 to 65535 only fine so now you can change you can modify its bridge priority as well like you can configure its priority as 0 and then you can say spanning tree mst1 sorry mst2 priority is what 4096 same as stp Previously in, in PVST and rapid PVST you were calling your VLANs because it was running instance of STP for each VLAN but here you are not running instances of STP for each VLAN actually you have configured instances of MST explicitly and you are running a single instance of MST for multiple VLANs so here every time you will require to call your MST instance number before doing any type of configuration any type of configuration fine then let's talk about i mean let's go let's move on switch 2 and let's configure the switch 2 as well spanning tree mst1 priority is what 4096 and then you can say spanning tree mst2 priority is what zero now you can come back on switch 1 and then you can say show spanning tree mst1 it will it must be root for instance two, of course it must not be a root it's not it so in this way you can manipulate your root bridge election in mst after going through all these practicals let's talk about rp election manipulation that how to manipulate rp election in mstp fine so let's do one thing let's move on switch two and uh, do show history no for instance one and no for instance two as well and let's do one thing let's move on switch one and then say spanning tree mst1240 or one to two for both instances priority so you can also configure your switch you can also modify priority of a switch for multiple instances of stp as well just like here in this example i configured its priority as zero for both instances instance one as well as instance two so this time the switch one will become root brace for instance one as well as instance two so spanning tree mst1 you see this is the root for instance two as well this is the root any problem then let's do one thing let's move on switch to now and show spanning tree mst1 see for this mst1 its rp is what 21 and for mst2 as well its rp must be 21 by default so is there any type of load balancing in between switch 1 and switch 2 is it will it be possible for switch 2 to utilize its uh, link 22 no. because 22 of course it cannot utilize 22 because 22 is in blocking state for both instances of mst is not it hello so of course it is not gonna to utilize this 22 
if you want that it should perform load balancing let's say for an example that for instance one of course uh, that's good that 21 is rp but for instance 222 must be configured as rp so how can you manipulate its rp election for instance 2 now again first of all cost but remember that cost you must modify your cost at the end of non dp so switch 2 is placed at the end of non dp so of course you will be if you want to manipulate your rp election based on cost then you will require to modify your cost at the end of switch 2 only because switch 1 is already working as a dp so always remember that if you want to manipulate your rp election based on cost then you will always modify your cost at receiving it who is receiving your bpdus is not it so this time uh, because now you can do one thing for instance to you see that cost is what 200,000 on 21 as well as on 22 also it is 200,000 and by default it will be receiving zero cost BPDUs because switch 1 is directly connected to switch 2 right so it is receiving zero cost BPDUs so what can we do either configure higher cost on 21 or configure lower cost on 22 for instance 2 only right by doing any one of the thing you can achieve your task let's say for an example for, uh, for fast ethernet 1 by 0 by 22 and then say spanning tree mst2 cost and here you cannot change cost like this mst spanning tree mst cost no you have to specify your instance so instance was 2 and then say cost and cost can be configured in between this range and by default it is 200,000 so make it 1,99,999 so it will become lower than 200,000 now and then after let me show you show spanning tree mst1 for mst1 is still it's 21 will remain as rp but now 20, for instance 222 must be configured as a understood hello yes sir fine if you want to manipulate your rp election in mstp based on designated port id then also you can same as stp because if their cost is common let me show you fast ethernet 1 by 0 by 22 and let me remove this command from here and let me compare their configuration I mean on 21 as well as on 22 for instance 2 show a spanning tree mst2 interface fast ethernet 1 by 0 by 21 and then say detail and this is the detail of 22 now and now let's compare details of 21 and 22 this is the detail of 21 and this is the details of 22 fine let me show you <coughs> designated root bridge id and designated bridge id is common it means this time my designated bridge id is working as a root bridge and you can also see designated port id this is designated port id this this one And this is cost to reach root bridge from designated bridge. And because your designated bridge is working as a root bridge itself, that is why cost is zero. Hey, I think you are getting confused now. This is switch one and this is switch two are interconnected with using. So for switch two, which designated bridge switch one because it is working as a that's why and of course this switch one is creating zero cost bpdu messages here so finally it have taken decision based on designated port id let me show you
See. So if you move on, I mean, if you wanna manipulate its RP election from switch one, then you can also perform it same as STP, same as PVST plus and rapid PVST plus. What will you do? Let me show you first of all. Uh, show spanning tree MST two. That all of them are working as a DP. And on 21 and 22, on both of them, you see port priority is what common. Now, because I wanted to change it for instance uh, two only, so either configure higher port priority on 21 or lower port priority on 22. So this time, what I'm gonna to do here? First, it's one by zero by 21, and then I will say spanning tree MST two port priority and higher than 22 it is by default 128 so next value would be 144 because again port priority will always be configured in the increment of 16. after doing this configuration let me show you its output so spanning tree mst2 is still all interfaces will be dp their state will be same but you can see here that port priority have been changed and now if you move on switch 2 let me show you show spanning tree mst2 now it's 22 must be configured as a rp yeah. even if you compare its configuration now once again like this is the configuration 21 and this is the configuration of 22 so this time you can see designated port id is what and here so which one is lower 128 that is why this 22 have been elected as a new rp so have you understood it or not that how to manipulate all the all these things tell me so this is that how can you do perform manipulation in mstp <coughs> that how to manipulate root bridge election how to manipulate uh, its uh, rp election and all and all fine and after going all these three i mean after going through all these three uh, all these things let's talk about that maximum hops by default in mstp maximum hops is configured as 20. what does it mean that whenever a bpd will be generated by a root bridge it can across maximum 20 switches now it can across maximum 20 switches and let me show you so spanning tree mst1 remaining hops is what 19 because switch one will be generating these bpdus with hop, hop count value of 20 so after crossing this switch it will become 19 only but if you want to modify it, if you want to modify it then go to switch one you can configure it in between one two two five five spanning tree mst max hops and then you can configure in between 1 to 2 for 5 by default it is 20 let's make it 2 for 5 so now on switch 2 whenever you will run this command that shows spanning tree mst1 remaining hops must be 254 it will not it is it is not benefit it is not gonna to across one switch more than one switch it means it will be able to transmit bpds only on directly adjacent i mean adjacent switches only they will not be any advantage they will be only and only disadvantage it's like something rip let's say that in rip you have configured your maximum hop count as five so it is not gonna to transmit those updates out from i mean uh, of course after crossing five so five hops your rip updates will get dropped so if your any router is more than five hop away will it be possible for that router to receive all those rip updates in same manner it will work have you understood it now fine then after let's talk about that how to change its timers and all so command will be spanning tree mstp mst hello time and then your hello interval if you want to modify its forward delay timer then say forward time and then forward delay timer then if you want to change its max age timer then say max age and then max age timer so in this way you can also modify you can manipulate its timers as well according to your requirement however it is always recommended to do not modify stp timers fine 
after going through it <coughs> let's talk about some problems that can occur in mst still we are not talking about it inter region still i'm talking about intra region mst configuration only right so in case of intra region definitely there will not be too much problems but still we are having some uh, concepts that you must be knowing all i mean all those things let's assume this is switch one and this is switch two let's say here we are having two interfaces two links available between these two switches 21 and 20 let's say this switch one is configured as root bridge dp and it will become let's say here you are having instance 0 instance 1 instance 2 on all switches i mean on both switches in instance 1 you are having vlans 1 to 5 and in instance 2 it's having vlan 6 to fine in same manner you have done configuration of switch 2 as well so now i am assuming that for both instances for instance 1 as well as instance 2 this switch this 21 is working as a rp now i am having a user in vlan 6 here i get your point and behind switch 2 also i am having a user in vlan 6 and they are having an IP addresses from same subnet, let's say 10.1.1 .1 .1 here and here you are having 10.1.2. And now, later on what you did here, that you disallow VLAN 6 from 21. From VLAN allowed list, you have removed VLAN 6 from 21. Trunk allowed list, right? Because 21 and 22, both of them are working as a trunk port. But from trunk allowed list now you have removed this VLAN 6. Will it be possible for switch to, to put to make this interface, this blocking port as a new RP4 VLAN 6 now? Will it be really possible for the LAN users of behind switch 1 and switch 2 of VLAN, VLAN 6 to communicate with each other? Why? see remember that if you are running pvst plus or rapid pvst plus if you block vlan 6 on this 21 then it will be allowed i mean this switch switches i mean the switch 2 will define this 22 as a rp automatically and will put it into forwarding Straight. state automatically but in case of mstp it will never happen you know why because in mstp you are not running an instance of stp for each vlan individually it's not pvst here in mst you have mapped a group of instances a bunch of inst sorry a bunch of vlans into a single instance of mst like in mst2 now you are having vlan 6 to 10 and now switch do not understand here your vlan it understands only instance of mst so because for instance 2 switch 2 will keep this 21 as rp and because the traffic of vlan 6 is not allowed through this trunk port so of course your traffic is gonna to drop it will be dropped so the lane users behind switch 1 and switch 2 of vlan 6 will never be able to communicate with each other now what are the solutions of this problem First, allow VLAN 6 on your trunk port. I got a point. First, allow your VLAN 6 on trunk port, 21 itself. Once you will allow it, then again, the LAN users of VLAN 6 behind both switches will start to communicate with each other. Second, if someone said that you are not allowed to modify your VLAN, sorry, your trunk allowed list, I mean, are you getting my point? Yes, 
so it means that now you cannot allow your villain 6 onto this trunk port 21 so how will you solve this problem now make villain 6 a material do one thing for instance 2 because villain 6 is allowed on 22 right yes Villain 6 is allowed on 22 and we know very well that this Villain 6 is part of instance two. 2. So do one thing, modify your switches configuration and configure this port 22 as RP for instance 2. So that now 21 will move into blocking instance, uh, sorry, blocking state for instance 2 and Villain 6 is part of instance 2. two. And Villain 6 is allowed through this trunk port now, 22. So now users behind switch 1 and switch 2 can easily communicate with each other. Each other. Tell me now again if you want to manipulate their rp election there will be two things there will be two different methods by which you can manipulate it right and one is by changing its cost and cost will always be required to change on switch two according to this diagram if someone said that okay you are not allowed to do modification on switch two then of course you will be manipulating this rp election from the end of switch one by modifying its port priority are you getting my point or not? Yes. Sir. So as per question, if you get any type of question related to MSTP, I, I, I think now you must be able to solve it. So remember this type of problem can occur in, in terms of MSTP only. Mm -hmm. This type of problem will never occur in case of PVST plus as well as PVST, sorry, rapid PVST plus. Because in case of PVST or rapid PVST, what will happen that if you disallow VLAN 6 on this 21, it, still it will be allowed on 22 and this 22 will become RP automatically. So this type of problem will never occur in case of PVST plus or rapid PVST plus. This type of problem can occur in case of MSTP only. Fine. So I hope that now you can solve this problem by your own. Balaji, is it okay? Fine. Should I perform it or you will be doing it by yourself? You can perform. You can perform. Or sh I should perform it. <laughs> one time. Huh? Only one time. My God. Only one time. Or you expect it for more times as well? <laughs> Interface range fast Ethernet 1 by 0 by 20, 19 to 20 and 23 to 24. Let's set down this interface. See guys, MST1 RP is 21 for MST2 RP is 21 for both instances right. Now to perform this practical switch 1 switch 2 is there. Here I am going to take R1 and here it is R2, R2. and I will make them member of VLAN 6. Six. mandatory let's move on our one
you see they are communicating right now what will i do i'll move on switch 2 and on its fa1 by 0 by 21 i'll say switch port trunk allowed vlan remove so interface is trunk so now you will see that vlan 6 will not be allowed via 21 and now you will see so spanning tree let me show you mst1 still its rp will be 21 and for instance 2 its rp will still be 21 now let's move on r1 and let's try to communicate with 12.1.2 will it be possible for them to communicate with each other but if you are running pvst plus or rapid pvst then definitely they will they will be able to communicate with each other even i can prove it should i no. so now what can we do we can manipulate its rp election right from the end of switch one itself i can move on fa0 by 21 or 22 and then i can say spanning tree mst2 port priority is like 112 lower than 21 is not it so once you will do this modification at the end of switch one then you will see that for instance 2 on switch 222 will become new rp and once again if you move on r1 and you try to communicate with r2 So in this way you can perform it so now intra reason mst is done and i also told you that what type of problems can occur in your live networks fine why do we require to perform inter region why do we require to configure inter region mst in which conditions you can require to have inter-region connectivity like for an example your company your organization have take over any other organization now you are, you were already having your layer 2 infrastructure they were also having their own layer 2 infrastructure now you you are required to merge these two infrastructure with each other fine of course they will be having different different mst like names might be they are having different instances might be they have mapped different vlans into a single instance of mst is not it might be they are using different revision number so if any one of the mst attributes gets mismatch it means switches will think that they are in different different regions is not it so if you are gonna to merge two different layer two networks where mst was configured so of course I, now you have two solutions either configure common MST configuration on all switches and for doing that of course you will require to have some downtime is not it like half an hour or one hour let's say that you do not have that much downtime so how will you do it you are simply you are simply having uh, one option like you can interconnect switches with using a cable that's it that's what you can perform Apart from it, you can't do anything right now because you do not have downtime. So how will be, how will you perform it? Or sometimes what happens that you you can also do some misconfiguration in your network. Like you can mistype its name, you can misconfig its revision number, you can also misconfig instances. It's not it. So again, there will be two different reasons in your single in, in inside a single uh, switched network. So now there will be only two things either they will communicate or the LAN users will stop to communicate with each other is not it so of course there in any condition there must not be any outage in your network so to prevent your network from outages in case of especially mst like for an example you have done some misconfiguration related to mst so to prevent your network your switch network from outages we are having this inter-region concept so now what can we do here let's say that this is switch one this is switch two switch three and this is what switch four let's say these two switches are in a single region and these remaining two switches switch three and switch four are in different region 
Let's say this is region A and this is region B. So of course you will be using different different attributes in both regions, right? So let's say that here name is CCIE and here name is CCNP on switch 3 and switch 4. It means now switch 1 and switch 2 will be in common region in a same region whereas switch 3 and switch 4 would be in a Different. same region i mean now we have divided this network into two different regions and if you are having more than one region then there will be a use of cist and at this moment if you do not understand the uses of cist it means you are not going to understand this inter region communication as well inter region convergence as well i said that this time we have divided this network this switched network into two different regions switch 1 and switch 2 would be in same region switch 3 and switch 4 would be in same region right and if you are talking about inter region communication in that case CIST which is instance 0 will be taking place and if you do not understand the uses of instance 0 then of course it is not possible for you to understand that how inter-region connectivity works or how how MSTP converts in case of inter-region so I'll be discussing instance 0 the uses of it the importance of CIST 0 in case of inter-region and everything right but this time I hope that you have understood that switch 1 and switch 2 will be in a same region in a common region and switch 3 and switch 4 will be in different in another region fine but right now all of them are in same region so let's do one thing first of all we have to draw this diagram in this manner only like switch 1 and switch 2 are already interconnected but now I have to interconnect switch 2 and switch 3 as well so I think switch 2 and switch 3 are interconnected with using 23 and 24 is not it so let's move on switch 2 and let's say no shutdown and now switch 2 must be connected with switch 1 as well as switch 3 and then further switch 3 show cdp neighbors must be connected with switch 2 as well as switch 4 fine now i'm going to modify their attributes like on switch 3 its name must be ccnp so spanning tree mst configuration name ccnp even we can also create some more instances as well like instance 3 vlan 11 to 15 do show history just copy and paste on switch 4 you now its name have become now and we have also created one another instance of MST which is instance 3 and we have mapped VLAN 11 to 15 into this instance of MST fine however on switch 1 and switch 2 we are still having only two instances of STP it's not it I mean two instances of MST or whatever it is fine now to understand this inter region convergence inter-region connectivity first of all we have to start it from very basics like forget about intra in, inter-region let's start it from intra-region itself see switch 1 and switch 2 are in the same region switch 3 and switch 4 are also in the same region fine that's true now in region a of course they will elect their own root piece it will be either switch 1 or switch 2 then region B will also elect its 
root bridge it will be either again switch 3 or switch 4 for all instances instance 0 instance 1 instance 2 instance 3 and as well as instance 4 i mean whereas sorry instance 4 is not available instance 3 is there and instance 3 is available in in, in reason b only is not it instance 3 is not available in reason a in reason a we are having only two instances instance 1 and instance 2 only so this time what will happen first of all perform intra region election so let's assume even we have configured lowest priority on switch one for all instances is not it like what can we do here i'm gonna to configure let me say it's spanning tree mst zero to two priority zero so in this region a switch one is gonna to be road place understood or not fine in same manner reason b will also elect its own root base it will be either switch 3 or switch 4, four. so which switch should be root base in in region b i think switch 3 is having best mac address then switch 4 so of course switch 3 will be root base but remember for cist which is instance zero zero, zero. there will be two things for instance zero there will be two things one is intra region root bridge and another one will be inter region Have you understood it now? See, there will be two things for instance zero. Regional root bridge, I mean to say intra-region root bridge as well as inter-region. So remember, it does not matter that how many regions are available in your switched <coughs> network. For CIST, there will be two types of root bridges available in your network. One, intra-region intra region and one another one will be inter region so if you talk about inter region root bridge there will be only one root bridge if you talk about inter region inter region root bridge for cist not for any other instance and cist is what instance zero so remember for instance zero there will be only one root bridge that will be common for all regions So now instance 0, sorry, is, let's say in region A, switch 1 has been elected as a root bridge, right? In region B, switch 3 has been elected as a root bridge. And now finally, there will be an election in between switch 1 and switch 3 for inter-region root bridge. So the switch which is having best bridge ID will be elected as a root brace for inter region for cist and it will be either switch one or switch three so who is gonna to be elect as inter region root brace in this case for switch instance one. zero switch yeah. one because it it is having its priority as zero right okay. whereas switch three was having three two seven six eight okay. so this switch one is gonna to be regional root brace as well as cist for cist also is not it i mean inter region as well this switch one so for switch two regional root bridge will be switch one for instance zero not only for instance zero for instance one as well as instance two so this is let's say 21 and this is 22 so for switch two 21 is gonna to be rp and 22 is gonna to be DP for all instances. Sorry, blocking. Block, block. For all instances. For instance, 0, for instance, 1, as well as for instance, 2. 
because here we are having only three instances available right now we knows very well i mean swiss 2 knows very well that regional as well as inter region root bridge is switch one so switch one will configure its interfaces as a dp for all instances for instance zero instance one as well as instance two because this switch two is having only three instances yeah. now Swiss 3 will come to know that I am regional root brace. I am regional root. Regional root brace. The Swiss 3 is the regional root brace. So how Swiss 2 is supposed to become BP? Yeah. Because here it is RP. So if it is receiving here superior BPD use. So it will transmit it out from these interfaces and from where it will transmit BPDs it will become DP. It is same as that we learned previously during PVST as well as rapid PVST. Fine. Now Swiss 3 knows very well that it is regional root brace but for CIST for CIST is <coughs> tell me of course switch one for cist switch one is working as a root brace fine and actually now switch three will take decision based on cist root brace so according to this cist now this let's say that this is 23 and this is what 24 so this 23 is going to be rp. rp in terms of cist instance 0 and this 24 is going to be in rp. by default because cost will be equal finally designated port rp. id will be taking place for cist right now if Swiss 3 have configured this 23 as RP for CIST then for this is the default feature of MST actually and you cannot manipulate it then Swiss 3 is also having some, some other instances as well like instance 1, 2 and 3 for all other instances also 23 will be RP and 24 will be in blocking state for all other instances as well automatically. fine and because switch 3 is working as a regional root brace so of course switch 4 will be having this information that regional root brace is switch 3 but for cist switch 1 is the root brace i will be showing all these things now as i said that on switch 3 for all instances switch this 23 is going to be rp it means you cannot get load balancing in between as switches because if you want that for instance 1 or instance 2 this 24 should be root port you cannot manipulate it whoever will be rp for cist will become rp for all for all other instances too so remember between two as switches you cannot get load balancing in case of inter region MST. mst configuration You cannot manipulate its RP election for a single instance. If you want to configure 24 as a RP, then you have to configure it as RP for instance 0. But if you configure it as RP for instance 0, then it will become RP for all other instances as well. Automatically. And you cannot manipulate it. You cannot modify it. And it is happening. You know why? Why is it happening? It is happening to prevent your switch network from bridging loops. If this rule is not followed by this switch 3, then definitely there can be a bridging loop you know why because might be both regions are having different different uh, different different instances and different different VLANs map into a instance here switch 3 was having three instances whereas switch 2 is having only two instances instance 1 and instance 2 whereas switch 3 is having instance 1 2 3 so instance 3 is not available on switch 2 that is why switch 3 cannot I mean at the end of C3 you cannot manipulate RP for a single instance it's not possible and if it is possible then definitely there will be a bridging loop and now don't ask me that how can it occur otherwise 
there will be a loop inside your brain. <laughs> <coughs> and one more thing. As I said, that switch 3 is gonna to be root brace for reason B because it was having best MAC address. There is one another rule also exists in MSTP that if you are having two different reasons and they are interconnected, of course, any one of the reason will be having root brace for CIST. I mean, inter reason root brace for CIST is not it. And that re this time, switch one is the inter reason root brace, right? I mean reason A is having root brace. So remember in another reasons inside other reasons like in region B edge switch will always be regional root brace. Edge switch will always be regional root brace. Means that switch 3 will always be regional root brace in all conditions. Does not matter that what is the priority of switch 4. Even you can configure its priority as 4096 so that it will become. I'm talking in, 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 in perspective of instance 0 only, not in perspective of instance 1 and instance 2. I'm talking about CIST only. Should I repeat my lines once again? I knew it that you guys are not gonna to understand it in very first attempt. See, first of all, if you are having two reasons, just try to understand in this manner now. You are having two different reasons. Both reasons will elect their are root, uh, root brace independently. Let's talk about instance 0 only, right? They will elect their root bridges independently, right? Let's say that regional, sorry, reason A have elected switch 1 as a root brace for CIST and reason B have elected switch 4 as a root brace for CIST. I mean, for instance, 0. For instance, zero. zero. Fine. Now there will be an election for inter-region root base. Let's assume that switch one have won this election now. So it is root base for CIST as well. Inter-region root base. Now in this region, region B, switch four will not be longer as root base now. Regional root base. It will become now switch 3 does not matter what is the priority configured on switch 4 re, re, remember that in all those regions which do not have root brace for cist which do not have inter region root brace their edge switch will always be configured their edge switch will always be become will always become as a root brace or will always be elected as a regional root brace. So in all other conditions, because this time for inter-region, if you talk about the inter-region root brace, switch one is working as inter-region root brace, right? So in all conditions, switch three will always be regional, regional root brace for instance zero. And again, it will happen to prevent your switch network from bracing loops. And you cannot manipulate it. Fine. In case if you are having this kind of diagram, let's say this is switch 1, this is switch 2, switch 3 and this is what? Switch 4. Let's say this time for CIST, you have configured switch 4 as a root brace. Now remember, in this region A, switch 2 will always be root brace, will always be root brace. But regional only? Reason, not inter reason, because inter reason root brace is what? Switch 4. And let me prove all these things now. <coughs> so, as per my available diagram, switch 1 is having lowest priority now, for instance, 0 among all switches. So, switch 1 must be root brace for CIST as well as regional root brace, right? Switch 1 and switch 2 are in same region. Show spanning tree MST zero. Let me show you. And if this switch is a root for CIST, it means it will also be root brace for reason reason for its own reason as well. Because if it if if it have won the election of CIST, it means it is also 
intra-region route bridge. Yeah. That's why it have won this election. Fine. So this switch one is working as a route for CIST. That is why it's all interfaces. 21, 22, both of them are working as a DP. Now we can move on switch two. So spanning tree MST zero. Now it will show you two things: regional route and main route. Switch two will be showing you two things: regional route and main CIST. I mean route for CIST. So this time you can see both of them are same. Hey both yes. of them are same you know why because switch 2 is in region a and in region a we are having root bridge for cist as well and which is switch one so switch one is working as a regional root bridge as well as inter-region root bridge that's why here you can see that regional root is the bridge id of switch one and main root bridge id is also bridge id of switch one and rp is what 21 fine for instance zero then let's move on switch three let me show you now so spanning tree mst zero regional root bridge must be this switch but for inter region switch one and that is why its rp is 23 Have you understood it or not? Yes, Let's move on switch 3 and you can see this is regional route, right? Then, uh, then after you can move on switch 4, switch spanning tree, MST 0. Let me show you. This is regional and this is main route. So main route is still switch 1's bridge ID. Yeah. But regional is the bridge ID of switch three. 3. And now let me show you one thing. higher than switch 1 but lower than switch 3 are you getting one point higher than switch 1 but lower than switch, switch 3. 3 but still you will see that switch 3 will remain as regional root bridge as i said that as a switch will always be a regional root bridge so in this reason let me show you spanning tree mst 0 this switch is not going to be a root bridge it's not saying that this is this switch is the regional route, right? If you move on switch three, let me show you so spanning tree MST zero. However, its own priority is what? So it have also proved that edge switch will always be a regional route base, but only in those reasons which do not have root bridge for cist what yeah now i'm coming on other i mean i'm talking i'm going to talk about other instances as well let me show you this is for instance zero right now she spanning tree mst1 on switch three it's rp here it will not call it actually rp it will call it master. master because neighbor switch is in different region and because for instance one it is working as a root that is why like 21 and 22 because 21 and 22 are going towards switch 4 so 21 and 22 both of them are working as a dp but interfaces which are going towards another region out from them it have elected master and you cannot manipulate it remember you cannot make 24 as master unless you don't configure you you, you do not manipulate rp election for instance zero if you configure rp it's rp as 24 like here for instance zero it's rp was 23 make it 24 in that case for all other instances its master will become 24 
so you cannot get load balancing in between edge switches, switches. fine even for instance 2 also it will be master for 3 also but this time 3 is not running you know because VLANs are not present like VLAN uh, from 11 to 16 now see master and you cannot manipulate it let me show you that interface fa0 by 24 spanning tree mst2 cost 20 lower than 21 and still you will see show spanning tree mst2 but if you modify it for instance 0 then it will be changed for all other instances as well let me show you interface fa0 by 24 let me uh, let me configure this command mst0 post 20 so spanning tree mst0 rp is now and now for instance one master will be for two also master will be for three also master will be Instances with for regional root bridge. Since 4 can be a root bridge. Yeah, of course. Let me let me show you. Like except instance 0. Forget about instance 0 now. Spanning tree MST 1. And uh, now you can say priority. What? Even ER 0 as well. For uh, 2 also. It will be 0. Now so spanning tree MST 1. It will be root. This switch is the and how become? DP. However, it is disputing with neighbor switch, but after all, dispute will be done. I mean, it will be, uh, they will negotiate that, okay, no, I, I mean, Swiss 4 will say that I'm DP, right? So it will be removed from here very soon. It will be removed. MST 2 also, it is saying on root. Now, if you move on Swiss 3, Swiss spanning tree, MST 1, its RP must be 21. For instance, 2 also its RP must be 21. For instance, 3 because it is working as a root. So both of them will be D. So for other instances within a reason, there will not be any problem. So I hope that now you have understood the uses of CIST. If there is no CIST, you cannot imagine about inter-region MST configuration or inter-region communication so all inter-region communication would be based on CIST is not it so that's all from MST maximum 16 instances only this series and will vary i mean this number will vary according to your platform hello again you have started to talk what is this bound RST remember if you are having two switches and both of them are in different regions then you will always see this bound rstp there are some other reasons also in which uh, you will also uh, find this bound rstp like uh, one switch is running MSTP and neighbor switch is running STP or RSTP because it have backward compatibility. Remember, MSTP, even RSTP have backward compatibility with PVST plus. In same manner, MSTP is also having backward compatibility with PVST plus as well as rapid PVST plus. So whenever you will connect MSTP and rapid PVST together, then also it will show you bound RSTP. Or if your switch is in different region, then also it will show you bound mm -hmm. RSTP. But it does not mean that it is having any kind of problem. Mm -hmm. It will simply show you that okay, it is not in same region. region. Or might be neighbor switch is not running same protocol as we are running here. Same STP protocol.
So MSP is widely used in industries. Which which one is more used? Now you tell about. I mean, you you told. I mean, you tell me about it because I have taught you all things, all advantages, disadvantages about PVST plus so rapid MSP PVST plus and MSTP. You you tell me that which one you will prefer as a network admin. Yes. Then why? <laughs> <laughs> of course you will prefer you will always prefer this mstp because it is having a lot of uh, advantages over others one is open standard second fast convergence third uh, less number of instances it's not it and of course it is it will also support load balancing fine so everything is available inside mstp hmm. less complex <laughs> Yeah, if you com configure VTP version 3 in your domain, then of course it will become less complex and I mean it will not be uh, complex as much it is now. Because now we have to do this configuration on all switches individually. We have to move on all switches individually and we have to configure all instances and name and revision and everything, right? But after configuring VTP version 3, you, just, you will simply require to do this configuration only on one switch and that information will be replicated will be propagated throughout the switch network dynamically so if you are having any problem please let me know otherwise we can wind up this class now and remember they have backward compatibility, compatibility. so you can also do it by yourself you can test their backward compatibility on one switch configure mstp on another switch configure stp or yes. rstp they will definitely work together is there anything else now so MSTP is done. I wanted to start some other topics as well and still we are having 18 minutes so we can start another topic as well. Stacking by phone size tagging. Phone size tagging? Even Even it's not part of lab, don't worry. You are having only and only theoretical concepts here. It will be part of written exam only. You will never get that practical in your but for your kind i mean for your satisfaction actually i'll be doing that practical at least we can perform stacking so we will be doing stacking don't worry but multi chassis ether channel is not possible because without vss it's not possible multi chassis ether channel and ec yeah it's not possible without configuring vss and vss can be configured only on 6500 series of switches that is why they added this topic for theoretical portion only for written exam not for lab exam because they they knows very well that okay in lab they cannot provide 6500 series of switches any problem okay let's talk about some other topics as well we are having some storm controls here storm controls now what is the meaning by what do you mean by storm tsunami yeah it is kind of like that <laughs> this storm is kind of tsunami and uh, in networks also there are some possibilities of flood there can be flood in your switched network as well it can be either unicast flood it can be multicast flooding and it can also be a broadcast flooding see traffic is coming in i mean like on if traffic is received on interface on an average rate then there will not be any problem like if water level in a river is up to i mean under uh, maximum limitation or maximum threshold right till that there will not be we cannot call it flood but once it will reach its threshold then we can call it that okay it is a flood however it's still water is going through the river same river right but we will call it flood and due to flood if flood is coming through the i mean in a river then it can damage its nearby places so that near i mean uh, all people who are staying nearby near to that river will suffer is not it in same manner if, if you talk about a network if you talk about a switched network 
let's say that bandwidth of your interface is 100 mbps right now you are transmitting some unicast traffic through that interface you are also transmitting and receiving multicast traffic and also you are transmitting or receiving broadcast traffic as well now let's say that your end users are transmitting too much unicast traffic too much due to that unicast traffic might be possible that your multicasted traffic will get suffer so there can be unicasting flooding as well there can be a unicast flood as well onto your interface there can be multicast flood as well might be someone have started to generate too much multicast traffic due to that multicast flooding might be your unicast traffic can suffer of course it can get suffer due to multicast traffic in same manner might be there is a broadcast broadcasting flood or there is a broadcast flooding right so if there is broadcast flooding then due to that broadcast flooding your unicast traffic as well as multicast traffic can get suffer are you getting my point or not yes, so in your switched network there can be a unicast flooding there can be a multicast flooding there can be a broadcast flooding what if if we bound them that okay unicast traffic can use up to this maximum bandwidth and unicast can use up to this maximum bandwidth this much maximum bandwidth multicast can use this much maximum bandwidth so we can control these types of storms we can control unicast storms we can control multicast storms we can also control broadcast storms we can configure some threshold values that okay if this interface starts to receive multicast traffic more than this rate i mean at 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 uh, i mean if it, if it reaches its higher maximum threshold value then this interface should move into error disabled state. state or it should generate a log masses towards nms snmp you can configure snmp as well simple network management protocol so that it can generate a log masses and it will be logged on your server right so that further you can anal analyze it right and you can uh, i mean you can uh, search in your network that due to what reason there is too much unicast flooding or multicast flooding or broadcast flooding to configure this storm control it's very simple like you can you just need to move under interface mode let's say you are on fa0 by sorry let's move on switch one and interface fast is one by zero by one say storm control now which type of storm control broadcast multicast or unicast let's say first of all let's configure for unicast itself level you can configure your level in percentile of bandwidth in terms of pps and also in terms of bps now it's up to you that what do you want to configure are you getting my point are you getting my point that your level can be defined as percentile of bandwidth bits per second kilobits per second megabits per second gigabits per second as well as packets like mega packets per second gigabits kilo 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 packets per second mega packets per second giga packets per second and also percentile is there so let's let's say that for unicast traffic i want to allocate like 80 percent of available bandwidth so i will say 80.0 this is the maximum threshold actually this is maximum threshold by and, and remember minimum threshold by default will be equal to maximum threshold but if you want to configure it then you can say falling threshold as well because it was rising threshold rising means maximum falling means minimum so if you do remember that whenever you will configure falling threshold it must be lower than rising threshold maximum threshold right or equal to the maximum threshold so let's say uh, let, let's assume that we don't i mean we are not going to configure it now and then after you can also say storm control for multicast for multicast i want to allocate like maximum 15 percent of available bandwidth then storm control for broadcast i will be allocating only five percent of available bandwidth are you getting my point 
and then finally you can take your action as well storm control action can be two things either you can put this interface into error disable state once they reach their threshold maximum threshold value or it can also generate a trap message it can also generate a log message <laughs> have you understood it now so it can generate a trap message or it can shut down your interface in 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 case it, it reaches its maximum threshold value and you can also take both of them I mean, you can also take both decisions you can say trap and also it should go down so that we will come to that okay why this interface went down so it will generate log message as well as I mean it will send a trap message towards NMS and also it will move into error disable state now of course it will be required then how will it be possible for this router have I taught you I have SNMP now you will be learning that SNMP don't worry about that fine so this time I hope that you have understood all these things fine and now let me show you show storm control this is for broadcasting only so even you can also specify here so storm control broadcast show storm control unicast show storm control multicast in this way you can check your output of storm control and it is showing you per interface right this time we enabled we configured this storm control for this specific interface only and tomorrow i will prove all these things that if you reach its maximum threshold value rising threshold value then it will immediately put your interface into error disable, disable state. state so i hope that you have understood the meaning by the storm control, control. Yes. it's kind of dam on river what 